Yo, what's going on everybody? Hindo G here coming at you with another video. Today I'm actually going to start a new series which I'm super super excited about. Uh, the series is going to be called Box Fights Until I Lose. And now the title pretty much says it all. I'm going to be box fighting a bunch of different people in every single video and I'll be box fighting them until I lose a game. Uh, so. I'm going to be explaining how I am box fighting people, give you guys tips and tricks, explain to you why I do specific moves, uh, and I'll be able to explain it in a way such that hopefully you guys can pick up what I'm doing and just maybe it'll make you a better player as well. So hopefully this is going to be an, an entertaining series and if you guys are excited make sure to hit the like button and let's get into it. Alright, so our first opponent is going to be Eric. I'm pretty excited about this. You know, I actually saw this video uh, idea from Musty Cow. He's a Rocket League YouTuber, super sick guy, uh, makes great content. So if you guys watch Rocket League, make sure to go and hit him up. But yeah, I was watching uh, some of his videos and he was doing a series called Ranked 1v1s Until I Lose. And I thought that was super cool and I thought that was a really good idea. Um, he was also really good at the game, obviously, he's Grand Champ, uh, highest rank in Rocket League. Um, so I thought that since, hey, I'm pretty good at Fortnite, maybe I can do my own variation of the series. Um, what, do you want me to change teams? I'll change teams. Okay, there we go. But yeah, anyways, so I think it's going to be a pretty sick idea. Hopefully you guys enjoy. It's all about peace control, right? push back into his own corner. He might pop an edit at me at any second. There we go. So as you guys can see, um, I basically took a bunch of peace control. I got that ramp in his box, I flipped it. Um, he only had an edit to the side and he could have edited down as well. But um, when I get the right hand peek, I back off and I put myself in a position where I'm always gonna be able to get that first shot after I make the edit because I back off and get that right hand peek. Um, I force his options and he has to take a really bad 50-50 against me. I'm gonna back off and try to take, try to make him waste a bunch of mats. If he peeks me, I'm gonna jump over and get a really, really easy shot on him. Missed my shot. Gotta reload as well. See, I'm forcing him to the left, so now I can do this peek on him. But too bad my aim is like really shabby right now. Gotta reload this shotgun. Wait for him to edit. Seems like he has a tendency of making edits. I'm waiting for this edit right here. I'll just take his wall instead. That was really good. He's going to be healing in this box. He might pop an edit on me. I tried resetting it, but it didn't reset. I'm glad they didn't hit me, though. I haven't been in a really bad spot right here, honestly. I could play it safe. Just go for a very protected peek. That was a really stupid edit on my part. I probably should have reset, uh, reset that door edit and went from the left, or at least given myself a better right-hand peek. But I knew that he was on such low HP that as long as he didn't 200 me, I would have been chilling. Or I guess he could have 180 me as well. I was on 174 HP, but I knew he was way lower than me regardless. So I'm going to trap this guy. He's going to make an edit on me. That was pretty predictable, but... I was waiting for him to make that same edit. Um, but yeah, definitely... Oh, wait for this edit. I'm waiting for him to back off. He might come at me from the side. I should be worried about that, but he doesn't look like he's... I'm gonna... That was definitely favorable for me. So he's just straight up running. Take that wall from him. He could also take this wall. I'm gonna let him heal because I need to reload as well. I don't want to be caught with my pants down. Let's take a little slow. And he edited on me when I had the right end peak, so I just kept on AR spamming him. I'm gonna back off here because I do have a lot of room to be able to heal up. And it looks like he's coming at me from the left side where I have the most protection from, so I'll get to 200 again. And it's basically an even playing field. 
And he's wasting a lot of time trying to attack walls that I'm not even against anymore. Yeah, that was a very bad engagement. If he peeks this, I... I'm gonna actually exit from this spot. Because it looks like he's wisening up a little bit. So this is a really bad spot for me, so I'm gonna try to get out of it. I think he might peek me here, yeah. Wait for the wait for the edit. He's all this shit's mine, bro. I just missed an easy shot. I wonder if I should keep track of my wins and losses. Like, let's say I win five and then I lose one, it would be five and one. And next episode, if I win three, then lose one, it would be eight and two. Um, maybe just to keep track of my progress, something like that. I don't know. Yo, first to five, all right? Yeah. All right, sounds good, brother. Good luck. All right, so we're going against Smoothie now. Good luck to you, my friend. You're gonna need it. <laughs> oh, that's so toxic. No, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. He's gonna make an edit on me, I think. Yeah, this guy's on zero ping or something. He's gonna try taking this wall, so I'm gonna instead do that. He has no shield anymore. He's gonna be backing off. So you see how I place that cone in the box? People like to place a ramp in the box usually, and sometimes I also will make the mistake of placing a ramp when I'm in that spot. But if that guy has his heels out, he's not going to be able to get a big shot on me right away. So if I just place a cone, I'm basically guaranteeing myself that he's not going to be able to edit that floor out. Um, he's not going to have any options, he's going to have to force the engagement with me. Forcing the engagement is what's going to end the fight sooner. If I place that ramp there, then sure I'm going to be slightly more protected, but the fight's still just going to drag out. He's still going to have an opportunity to like slither away from me, and he's still going to be able to try and heal up. Uh, so instead, I'm going to force... Just always be pulling your guns out, you know, here and there. You know, try to predict your opponent. If you think your opponent's going to make an edit, if you have your shotgun out and you have decent aim, you're always going to get the shot off first. And if you have, and even better, bonus points if you can help, uh, be behind an edit. So, like, let's say you're like like this. Sorry, uh, I'm doing this mid box fight. But if you can shoot, then reset the edit. Watch this edit. See, when you have a ramp there, that guy still has the opportunity to edit down it. So if I got a cone in there, then there's no way that he's going to be able to edit down. I'm going to wait for an edit. I'm going to pretend shoot and edit. You want to mix it in sometimes, right? I'm going to reload my gun while he's on his back feet. He's probably going to make an edit on me because he's in a pretty desperate spot. I'm gonna keep bringing my shotgun out. He just reset his wall, so he might want to make an edit on me. Watch this edit. Nice. But instead, I also had my shotgun out, so that oh, this guy has this wall. This is gonna be a hey. Okay. okay, so that happened. I'm backing off because none of those edits are mine really. He still owns this. He has really, really good ping. I'm gonna back off and see what I can do from the side. Watch the edit, watch the edit. Ah, no way. Alright, we can just both heal up here. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I should have hit my shotgun shot there. Nice shot. He owns this wall on me, and I think he's going to try to edit on me. Yo, GG's, brother. Yo, GG, my man.
Yeah, so I mean, once I got him weak, I could just jump in his box using the phasing technique. I used his ramp that he placed at the beginning of the fight, um, which made it seem like maybe I wasn't going to do the phasing thing. Like, if you place your own ramp, and then you start pickaxing, then they know, like, oh, he knows he deliberately put a ramp down, which means that he's definitely phasing into my box. Instead, I did it in such a way that he wasn't sure until I literally jumped swing my pickaxe that I was using his ramp to my advantage to jump into his box. So that's a little tip for you guys. Pro gamer moment right there. All right, let's look for another person and I'll be back when I got someone else. Hey, I like your skin, twinning. Dab me up. <laughs> All right, good luck, my man. You too. All right, so we're going against Pebble OK. Let's see what he's made out of. No. Trying to get that wall. You can back it off. For 35 HP, you definitely want to take that Slurpfish. I'm gonna grab this wall before anything else. What? Nice shot, nice shot. I did get phased over a stair, which is a little bit unfortunate. He's in a box with my cone in it. I'm gonna let him heal. If I can get to 200, I know he can't. I fled it. See, even if he baits me there, it doesn't matter because I will just reset my own wall. I want to see what he's up to. Anytime you see an edit like that. Anytime you see an edit from someone that's below you, you want to instantly reset whatever you have to protect you, whether that be a cone, whether that be the wall that you're next to. You never want to actually engage it because they can easily jump peek you, which means that they'll always have the advantage. Plus, they'll always be able to go for your head since you're looking down at them. So you never really want to take that engagement because it's 50-50 at best. And I don't. I want to teach you guys not to take 50-50s. You only want to take a fight that's either super in your advantage or 100% in your advantage. I know he owns that wall. I'm going to let him. No way, I just missed that. I'm gonna back off because that floor is not mine. It does. He owns both of those, so I can just play it safe until I get the cone. You never have to make an edit that's way too risky. He still owns it. Now I own it. If he places a cone in his box or something. Sorry, man, I had to do it to you. I swear I'm not toxic, I swear. Make the edit. I dare you. He probably could have made an edit there. So he placed the cone in his box, which is smart. I'm actually gonna disengage from this angle, come to this box because of that cone. He's actually really smart and placed the cone in his I'm gonna see what I can do here, though. Wow, I missed. I choked. I'm lagging pretty badly. Uh, oh. 
Yeah, I think I might have just hit a weird stutter. We're chilling now. You can keep going. Okay. Wow, my builds are still a little laggy. Yeah. I think we still win. You could make an edit here because I don't own any of this really. I can 50 50 him. That was not a good engagement. You have to reload, so it's going to take three seconds to reload. And I'll have everything healed up by then. I find it odd that he didn't take the time to heal either, though. Gotta be worried about my mat count a little bit. I only have 12 bills left. I'm gonna start whittling his mats away. If he peeks me on the left, I'm jump shotting him. He's white. He's gonna edit on me. His only leverage is gone. Once I take that wall back, all of his leverage is gone. I have the cone that he's standing on, which means that he may have overextended before taking his peace control. So he needs to take that cone back and either place a ramp of his own or placing a cone of his own. He can't leave it. He can't leave my cone there because that blocks all of his moves. Um, so when he overextends like that, that's why you want to place cones like that because you basically ruin their options. Like they have no options if I take my wall back. If I take my wall back and he's overextended like that, I mean, it's an easy win for me. Watch this edit. He's popping a slurfish, which means that he's not going to have any more heals over 150. I definitely want to play on him here. He could easily take my wall here. Remember, he has no slurpfish anymore, so he's going to be on... Only thing he had left there is his pump shot. Yo, GG's bro, you take it easy, man. Uh, so I wanna actually talk about that one more time. There's two main things that you have when you're box fighting someone, or fights in general, because every fight's basically a box fight when you're playing Fortnite these days. You have two things that are going to be to your advantage. One is the build you have, which means what edits you can make, how many options you have to either move around or make different edits on people. The, th the second thing you have is a big pump shot. Any pump shot, if you have your pump shot ready, aka having your shotgun out, that's something that if you're on the opponent's end, if I see someone with a shotgun out, I'm not going to make an edit on them, obviously, because then they're just going to be able to shoot me. But once I hear that he made his shotgun shot, like I baited that shot out, and I have the edit on him, he has nothing left. He has nothing. So you want to take advantage. The moment you hear him take his shotgun shot, there's a delay until he can take his next shotgun shot, which means that you've nullified any of his edits that he can make because you have the one wall between you and him and he's already taken his shotgun shot. So he has no assets left on him. So you can make that edit and he's screwed. It is all over. It is all your advantage. You just have to take advantage of it. Make that edit as quick as possible and take your shot and make sure that your shotgun shot does big damage as well because he's basically just a fish out of water. So you don't want to just try to flick on him and get the nuttiest shot in the world. You just want to get that consistent 100 shot, especially if you already have the advantage and he's a little bit weak, you're going to get him every single time. Alrighty guys, so we went up against three people today, and I think I'm probably going to call it at three then, because, you know, if we do many more people, like this video can literally be an hour long, um, so maybe we'll do a couple people every episode, maybe we'll make these episodes longer if you guys really enjoy it, uh, but... Uh, the concept of this video is that the video ends right when I lose a box fight, um, a box fight series that is not just a singular round. Uh, so hopefully if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to leave a like on it and comment down below what you think I could do differently um, that'll make the series more interesting or anything like that. Like I said, I think I'm doing a pretty good job with the analysis side of things. So if you guys want to learn and get better, I feel like this is where you need to be um, to actually get that information because I'm trying to give you guys as much of my knowledge and as much of my thought process as we go through these box fights as possible so um if you did like make sure to like the video wow who would have thunk uh and also make sure to subscribe if you're enjoying because that tells me hey like you want to see this content more um so then it's going to make me more inspired to make more of this content 
So with that said, I'm going to leave it at that. Hopefully you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.